Hey guys, this is your pharmacist Citra and welcome to another lesson of Pharmacy Tech Study Guide. In this video, we're going to discuss pharmacokinetics, which is the drug's journey in the body. And by definition, pharmacokinetics is passage of drugs into the body, through it, and out of the body. I would say think of pharmacokinetics as a medication's journey through the body during which it passes through the four different phases which are absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. I would say just remember these phases by the acronym ADME. Now before I get into the details of these phases, let's understand their like one-liner definition to make it easier for you to understand and not to overwhelm you. Okay, the first one is absorption, which is how the drug moves from the site of administration to the site of action. The next up is distribution, which describes the journey of the drug through the bloodstream to various tissues of the body. The third one is metabolism, which describes the process that breaks down the medication in the body. And the final and the fourth stage is excretion, which describes the removal of the drug from the body. All right. Now that you know the basic definitions, let's look at these phases in detail. The first stage of ADME is A for absorption. Now absorption is the movement of a drug from its site of administration to the bloodstream. Now a few of the common ways to administer drugs are oral ways, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intramuscular like getting a flu shot in the arm, subcutaneous would be like injecting um, an insulin shot just under the skin. Then we have intravenous, um, route which is like receiving chemotherapy drug via vein we also have a transdermal route which is like wearing a skin patch now with all these routes of administration the rate and extent of drug absorption really depends on multiple factors and these multiple factors are how you're administering the drug the formulation of the drug and the chemical properties of a drug also the drug food interactions now medications taken by mouth travel via special uh, blood vessel leading from digestive tract into the liver where a large amount of medication is actually broken down resulting in um, you know partial or incomplete absorption and therefore lesser amount of drug is delivered to the site of action now this is referred to as first pass effect in other routes of administration, the drug bypasses the liver and it actually enters the bloodstream directly. For example, you know, when a drug is given intravenously, the absorption is not required at all because you're giving the drug directly into the bloodstream. So the bioavailability is 100%. Why? Again, the active form of the medication is delivered directly and immediately into the systemic circulation, right? So it doesn't need absorption. It's going to go straight or to the side of action via the bloodstream distribution. So once the drug gets absorbed, the next stage of ADME is D for distribution. Most often, the bloodstream is a vehicle for carrying medicines throughout the body right now during this step the side effects can occur when a drug has an effect at the site other than its target area okay for example for a pain reliever the target organ might be sore muscle in the leg but because on the way going to the leg it binds to some receptor similar to target site in the stomach thus an irritation of stomach occurs as a side effect of the medication right so the other thing is that the drug will move from the absorption side to tissues around the body and many factors actually could influence this such as blood flow, lipophilicity of the drug, uh, molecular size and how the drug interacts with the components of blood like the plasma proteins in the blood whether it's very sensitive to the plasma proteins whether it it doesn't bind to them so things of those nature for instance uh, now if you give a drug 
like warfarin, which is highly protein sensitive, or in medical term, we would say protein bound, which means that only a small percentage of drug is free in the bloodstream to exert its, its therapeutic effect. Okay, now remember only the free drug is going to exert its therapeutic effect. The drug or the portion of the drug which is bound to the protein or the plasma proteins is not going to show its effect. Okay, so in case of uh, warfarin, if since it's high protein bound drug, it's not going to have as much of an effect compared to the same concentration of the drug which is not plasma protein uh, bound okay but on the other hand if a highly protein bound drug is given in combination with warfarin it could displace the warfarin from the protein binding sites and that will then increase the amount of warfarin that enters the bloodstream and reaches the site of action. So after the medication has been distributed throughout the body and has done its job, the drug is broken down or metabolized, which is the M in the ADME. Now everything that enters the bloodstream, whether swallowed, injected, inhaled or absorbed through the skin is carried to the body's chemical processing plant which is the liver the big processing plant of the body now their substances are literally chemically beaten up twisted cut apart or they're also then stuck together and transformed by the proteins in the liver which are called enzymes and many of the products of enzymatic breakdown or metabolites are then chemically less active than the original molecule. Now, some factors that affect the drug metabolism are genetics. Uh, it could be age, food, and some of the other medications. Genetics actually have a great impact uh, whether uh, someone metabolizes drugs more quickly or slowly. Uh, age can have an impact on actually liver function because the elderly can have reduced liver function and may metabolize drugs a little bit slowly, um, which increases the risk of intolerability. And also in the newborns and infants, they have like immature liver function and they also may require special dosing because their liver is not strong enough or mature enough to do all that metabolization. Another thing is that uh, the drug interactions can actually decrease the drug metabolism by enzyme inhibition or increase the drug uh, metabolism by enzyme induction because some of the drugs you know may uh, promote the enzymes the the breaking enzymes in the liver and some of the drugs may actually decrease the uh, medication breaking enzymes in the liver so that's something to keep in mind now during the metabolism phase the liver may secrete the drugs or their metabolites into the bile that is stored in the gallbladder then okay and the gallbladder then empties the bile into the intestine from where any drug or active metabolites are reabsorbed or they're just simply um, eliminated within the feces in this phase the drug is now in its inactive form and it's ready to exit the body this removal happens via urine or feces. Uh, most drugs and their metabolites are actually excreted in the urine by the kidneys because kidneys simply, you know, just filter and remove the waste materials from it and is actually faster than the fecal e excretion because when the drugs are excreted through the feces, generally they take like a day or two because um, via urine the elimination is faster like within hours of administration while with feces it may take like a day or two like i said before um, another thing is uh, some of the drugs may also be excreted in the sweat in the saliva breast milk or just simply exhaled in the air now when excreted through kidneys many factors affect the excretion like your direct kidney function if you're 
kidneys are you know dysfunctioning uh, that could definitely prolong the half-life of certain drugs and that may require some dose adjustment like in case of this new uh, COVID treatment medication Paxlovid that medication is eliminated through the kidneys the elderly patients who actually don't have fully functional uh, kidneys they require a lower uh, dosage of that medication another thing is age that's a huge factor it could contribute to uh, differing rates of excretion and impact the dosing of the medication as well you may have noticed in elderly people um, their you know kidneys aren't fully functional so uh, they have to decrease the dosage um, of the medication that way the concentration of the medication doesn't raise over certain levels in the body and cause toxicity you know some of the um, pathologies like diseases may also impact the renal blood flow such as if somebody have congestive heart failure or liver disease that can make the drug excretion less efficient now one thing to remember is that elimination phase is super important in pharmacokinetics because it really helps maintain the steady level of the medication in the, in the body the rates of distribution, absorption, and elimination must overall be very balanced to ensure that the body always has enough medication because we don't want too much or too less of a drug in the body at any times because too much of a drug can result in toxicity which can be deadly and too little of the drug is not going to be providing enough a therapeutic effect. Alright, so this concludes today's lecture. Just remember, pharmacokinetics is vast and as a pharmacy tech, you just need to understand the basics of it and I tried to explain everything in simple and easy to understand words for you. Still, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me or write your questions in the comments. I always look forward to your comments and thank you so much for watching this video and good luck with your exam hey guys if you found value in this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and remember to subscribe to stay up to date on new weekly videos